welcome 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 hallelujah glory to god welcome Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you with this message in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. I just want to say to someone today, it is well. Whatever your situation is, Whatever your story is, it is well. There is nothing that you are going through that God is not aware of. There is nothing that is happening in the spirit that God don't know about. When God gave the keys of the kingdom to Peter, he said, Peter, whatever you bind on earth, it's already bound in heaven. He said, whatever you loose on her, it's already loose in heaven. I, I came today to remind you that it doesn't matter what you're facing. God is in control. He has not forgotten you. And in this time and season that we are in, he wants you to trust him. God is jealous. And he don't share his glory with no man. God don't share nothing that is happening that belong to him. He don't share it. Because he's a jealous God. And he remind us that he is a jealous God. Amen. So I encourage you that whatever your story is, put God first. Whatever you are dealing with any problem that you're facing put God first everything that is happening is already aware so don't try to take those burdens and carry them don't try to carry any burden on your own the word of God said he is our father and it means that he is responsible for us. As children, our parents are responsible for us. He is not our earthly father. He is our heavenly father. And he said, I am your father. You are my child. Come to me with your problems. I'll take care of it. It is, it is difficult for some people to trust God. But when you trust God, you will begin to understand that that is all you had to do. Stop stressing about small things that seem that it will never change. Maybe you have a family member or a spouse or a child that it seems as if no matter what you pray about, this child, this stubborn child is not going to change. Trust God. Trust timing. Timing is everything. You see, you might be praying and nothing is happening. And you're saying to yourself, God has forgotten about me. Because I'm not getting any result. There are times when you might have to just repent. Some people are asking God for a long list of things. And in that long list that they have, repentance is not on it. 
forgiveness is not on the list. And there are some prayers that you have to pray. But before you pray those prayers, you have to ask God for forgiveness of your sins, the known and the unknown. What am I talking about? The unknown means sometimes we hurt people and we don't even have any knowledge of it because it's an habitual thing for us. Could be some old habit that we need to drop. So we are unknowingly hurting people. We need to stop. We need to change. The reason why many, many, many prayers are still lingering in the air is because we did not repent. You can't just go to God anyhow. You have to clean yourself spiritually to go to God if you really want answer. The Bible said the effectual prayers of the righteous avail it much. There are some spiritual steps that we have to take in order to really provoke God, in order to hear his voice, in order to see his hand. He said, my hands are sh not short. It means that it doesn't matter what he did for somebody over that side. He can do it for you. There is no secret to what God can do. But there are some things that you have to do to Touch God, to, to, to reach God, to, to feel him and know that he is still here and he is serious about you. There is a verse in the book of Psalms that reminds us that God takes pleasure in our prosperity. It means that it pleases God to prosper us. I didn't come here to preach past prosperity. It is already promised to us as believers. So I don't really talk about prosperity. Those are the promises of God concerning us believers. Hallelujah. Right? So he, he takes, my God, write this down. He takes pleasure in your prosperity. And as a believer, we shouldn't have to worry about certain things as long as we are living to please God. So back to this part. If you have this stubborn husband that won't change, these stubborn children that won't listen to you, change the things you're saying to God. You might say, but God, I already repent. Search yourself. God answer prayers. Search yourself. Don't blame anyone. Search yourself. As a believer, your prayers can move mountains. Why? Jesus said. And if Jesus said, then so shall it be. He said you can speak to that mountain. Your mountain could be your stubborn children. Your mountain could be that thing that is going on at the workplace. So you have to mention some things to God in prayer. Sometimes you have to get on your knees by yourself. You don't need 10 people with you. It's you and God. And said, God, tell me what do I need to do? Go to God for instructions. You know, when, when, when we are being recruited, they call it orientation. When we are being recruited for a new position, they have orientation. Some orientation lasts one day. Some orientation lasts one week. Some orientation, they tell you that you'll have to shadow somebody in order for you to be Left on your own, you have to shadow someone for maybe a week or two. It's the same way with God. He don't want us to take it up on our own and be responsible for anything. He's our father. He's responsible for us. So we don't carry burden. Our job is to forget about the things that we pray about and leave it. 
God is serious. If it is a joy for the Lord to bless us, what do you think? There are some people that try to curse us. There are some people that try to tear us down. But because of his love that he has for us, love can Yeah, it covers a multitude of sin. So don't worry. The, the, the thing with us, we worry too much as believer. He said, I did not give you that spirit of fear. When you fear, it means that you're afraid. Some, some of us don't want to hurt God's feelings. And some of us, we don't care. But what God is saying, I did not give you the spirit of fear he said what did i give you power i give you sound mind and i give you love so why are you worried stop worry cleanse yourself sanctify yourself when david slept with solomon's mother before she had solomon and she got pregnant and God killed that baby. Oh yeah. God took the child. Because it was it was infidelity. The woman was a married woman. And David slept with the man's wife. And got her pregnant. And then he got the man killed. But God God is so compassionate that after the baby died, God told her, told him to sanctify the woman. And take her as his wife. You see how compassionate God is. So I don't see. You, 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 you didn't kill anybody. Stop carrying burden. You're a believer. Trust God. Stop worrying about what you cannot change. Whatever you cannot change. It belongs to God. There are times when God is. Leaving some things for you. To get closer to him. There are some prayers that many of you are praying and God is saying, look at you. You want me to do all this for you and you're not even faithful to me. L -l Excuse my manners. Welcome everyone. Happy Friday. Listen. Listen, people of God. Stop worry. He said, I did not give you the spirit of fear. I give you power. I give you a sound mind. And I give you love. There were some people in the past. That made us feel unloved. Until we meet Jesus. We realize. So all this time. What was I chasing after? Know that I found Jesus. And I know he loves me. The Bible said he loves us. He love all of us. Live your life to please him. Just forget about your problems. You cannot fix any problem. Number one, you cannot even fix people. And many times we fail trying to fix people. You know how many people are laying down in the hospital right now because they have tried and they have tried and they have tried and they failed. You cannot fix anybody. Your job is not to win argument, win souls for the kingdom of God. Stop worried about the people that you cannot fix. How many times are you going to hear the same scripture? Fear not. Cast all your cares on me. Bring your burdens to the cross. This is what it means. Pray and trust God that these people that you are asking him to fix, they will be fixed. He said, in my time, I will make all things beautiful. Welcome, my dear. God bless you. He said, in my time. It means that God have a time clock. So you are there worried about people receiving you. Don't worry about people receiving you. God will put the right people in your life to love on you.
God will put the right <laughs> God will put the right people in your life. You will wonder why are they so clingy? Why is this man so clingy? But remember, there was a time when you felt unloved. So now he's giving you someone to just love on you. The past is history. Focus on what's to come. He is a loving father. He is, you know, Sunday I was in church and the Lord was using me to minister to someone. Remember, it's cool time now. So we have to turn on the heat in the church. And the direction where my chair was, I could feel a wind coming from that direction. Cool wind. No. We have to turn on heat. And I felt wind blowing. I'm here to tell you, he is here. God is just reminding us. All we have to do is trust him. All we have to do is believe. If you don't believe, you cannot trust God. If you don't believe, you cannot. The reason why certain things are not happening is because you doubt God. Once you believe wholeheartedly, oh Jesus, once you believe wholeheartedly that he is a rewarder to them, that diligently seek him. God is. He has been. He didn't change. You're saying that God don't hear your prayers or God didn't answer your prayer because you didn't get what you asked for. It means that many times we look at it wrong. We need to know our assignment. There are some things that God is expecting from us. And we are not delivering, but we want God to deliver to us. Listen to me. Many times he will tell us, he will remind us that we are disobedient. He will remind us that we need to go into that corner and not that corner. You hear me? me, me oh, Jesus. Many times God just wants us to show him that we care. Many times God wants us to just even pray for someone that, that is no longer a part of your life. Someone that hurt you. He wanted to release a word in the atmosphere so he can bless you because he said, bless those that despitefully use you. Ah. God, God, God is... God is funny. Mm -hmm. Because the things that he does, it seems sometimes like foolishness, but it's called wisdom. Yeah. I'm, I'm sharing this information with you so you understand that the very thing that you are worried about, it's not for you to worry about it. It belongs to God. The thing that, that caused you to not be able to sleep. Stop thinking about it. Stop What? Listen. You cannot change the time of day. You cannot change the rain from falling. You cannot change night from turning into day. So if there is someone that you know can do all these things. That turn night into dear. Yes. Who belong in your life? So why are you trying to do things on your own that you have no business doing? There was a time when he turned water into wine. That brought powerful testimony. You can't do that. So that person is your daddy. Trust him. Trust God. 
everything belong to him. The whole world and all the chaos of this world is in his hands. The Bible tells us that he can change the land. He can heal the land in one day. The Bible tells us, Sister Carleen, that he can heal the land in one day. The Bible tells us, Sister Nadine, Sister Kadian, that God can heal the land in one day. It means that who are you to worry about what you cannot fix? Leave, every, leave God business to God. If there is something in your life that you desire and you don't have it, talk to God. Stop trying to do things. Stop trying to use looks and muscles to do things because that don't work. Spiritual things belong to God. The Bible was telling us yesterday that Jesus was telling Peter that whatever you bind on earth, it's already done in heaven. It means that whatever you, your physical eyes can see, the thing happened long time spiritually. Yes, everything around you that you are physical, uh, you can see physically. It manifests physically, but there was a time it manifests way before you get to see it. It already done in the spirit. Some people are walking dead. They are already dead, but it's only a matter of time before the thing happen physically. So stop worrying about what you cannot change. It's in God's hands. Trust God's timing. Many times you look around you, you realize that you are so blessed. Glorify God. You may be worrying about one small thing, but how many things has he done for you? You can't even tell it all. It, there is no amount of words to, the, to, to, to explain or to tell him, thank you, Jesus, because of all that is happening in the world. You are blessing me. I feel good. I am healthy. Look at this. You are healthy. You have a nice comfortable place to sleep you're not left in the cool give god thanks this morning i was looking at a a, a person that was on tv every day in big movies who is now homeless thank god for where you are the woman was crying Mm -hmm. TV star, homeless. You and I, we have a home. We have a place to... S you see, there's an old song that says, I have a good place to sleep. I got food on my table. I got shoes. I don't know. I don't remember the actual wording of the song. It says, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. You have a fine family. You have food on your table. You have a good place to sleep when night comes, even if it don't belong to you. God provide. Jesus, let us be grateful. Let us, what do you have to give God thanks for? You, you see, some of us, we have so much problem, we don't even remember to tell him thanks. We worried about everything. I remember when I was a young girl in school, primary school, we, there was a concert. And, and my, one of my cousins, he got up and he went to, with, he recite, you know, he said, I have, a ho I have a lovely home with every single thing. A mother and a father, a front door bell to ring, a dining room and a kitchen, a bedroom and a hall. But the baby in the cradle was the nicest thing of all. This thing has been in my head since I was a child. But it is a way to acknowledge where he take you from. You know, if you are not saved, it's time to repent. Yeah. 
Maybe you gave your life to God a long time ago, but you know you're on the fence. You're not doing everything that God wants you to do. Somebody is saying, I'm waiting until I, I find a spouse, then I give my life to God. Who told you that? The last person that told me that died last year, died earlier this year. A woman told me in church last summer, I was in Jamaica, we were preaching, we were in church having program and the Lord, she came up for prayers. She asked me to pray for her. And I said to her, the Lord, not I, the Lord used me to ask her if she's ready to surrender to God. And she said, no, I cannot surrender my life to God. I said, but you need prayers. You, you came up for prayers. You want something from God, but you don't want God. You want God's servant to pray for you, but you are not ready to accept him. I said, the Lord said he's knocking on your door. You need to answer him. She said, I can't, I can't accept God right now because I'm not married. I asked her, I said, who told you that you have to be married in order to accept Jesus Christ? She said, my neighbors. Yeah, some of you might remember it was, we were alive in church. And she said, yes, the neighbor told her to don't give your life to God because you live with a man and you're not married. I prayed. I said, I'm going to pray for you to get closer to God. But God is saying, he's calling you. I did not know about this woman's medical condition. She died earlier this year. And somebody said she was getting ready to get baptized the following week. But she never made it to her baptism. She died. I'm older than her. So let me be clear. And that is called premature death. That, that is called premature death. I'm not 70 years old. And the Bible, the Bible tells us that God gave us three squares and ten. And three squares and ten mean 70. So if you die before what God promised you, you die prematurely. So she died prematurely. Because she listened to her neighbor, people of God. Stop taking wrong advice. Trust God. Trust God. So she died and leave the man. So now the man is going to find somebody else. You see? Hello? She died. She's gone. Just saying this to say, be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you take advice from. The woman is dead. It's time for us to trust God. We have to trust God. We have to believe the word of God. Hello? Hello? We have to be grateful that we have the scriptures. I'm going to read one scripture that I was talking about earlier today. The Lord gave me a message and in this message is a scripture. We have to be careful because everything that God is telling us is sending, is directing us to the word of God. So the scripture goes like this. Ephesians chapter 5. And here, he was speaking about how men should behave. The word of God says that he might sanctify and cleanse with the washing of water. By, let me, let me, let me start over. I'm going to start at verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 25. It says, he was talking to the man. He said, husband, love your wives, even, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And he, 
the word proceeded to verse 26. It says, and it said that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. We're talking about Jesus now. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. So God is expecting us. We are the church. To don't have no spot. Or don't have no wrinkle. Spot means stain. God wants us to be pure. You know when. We are getting ready to do things. We want to look sharp. We want to look brand new. My mom used to love to iron. Yes. The week carried five weekdays and two days for the weekend. But seven days a week, growing up, I look sharp. Because my mom could sew. And she loved to iron. I am like that. Here it is. The same way we like to look crisp, even if the clothes is not new, once it's ironed properly, you look brand new. It's the same thing God is expecting from us. The same way we want to look brand new on the outside. He wants us to be that way on the inside. Without spot. Here, Ephesians chapter 5. Without spot and without a wrinkle. So when we take on the problems of this world, carry it on our shoulder. Oh, we're going to have time for God. This is why he said, cast your cares on me. He said, come on to me if you're tired, if you're weak, if you're heavy laden. I am going to give you rest. Many of you are tired. You're tired to carry other people's burden. You are, God said, put it down. He said, put down those things. That is not for you, a believer. We carry everybody baggage. Stop. Stop. He want to give us rest. He said, I will give you rest. He said, come to me if you're weak. He said, don't get weary in doing good. He means that if you're used to do good, continue. Yes, people are going to hurt you. Yes, things are going to go left sometimes. But don't stop doing good. Continue to do good. Stop trying to fix people. Just pray and done. Make time for the Lord. Many of us, we take on so many problems and we're acting like we are a mechanic and we cannot fix these problems because they belong to God. Problems belong to God. Many of us, we create problems because we take on, the, you, you, you see trouble. But you see, in the book of Proverbs, the Bible tells us that a smart man Proverbs use the word prudent. A prudent man see trouble and walk away from it. But a foolish man. And when I when the word say foolish, I call him angry. Because when we're angry, we are fools. I'm telling somebody this today. A foolish man see trouble and walk into it. Because your sister, this man is a madman. Your sister, that woman is a mad woman in clean clothes. But just still run into it. I know you're asking the church to pray. You heard about his reputation. You heard about her track record. You've been through it. You fight for it. But now, you're, you're mad at people because nobody will join you in prayer. You heard that this person's hands were dirty. You know about these people, how they practice witchcraft. 
But you didn't care. You, you bypassed the word of God. And said you can fix it. You cannot manangle anybody to serve God. You cannot manangle anybody to receive deliverance. The word is the seed that we have to sow and done. You cannot manangle anybody to listen to you. Faith come by hearing. So you cannot force people to listen to you. Say your portion and stop talking. That is wisdom. You don't have to argue the scripture with anybody. Whatever God directs you to do, do it and zip it. It doesn't matter if it's a husband, baby father, brother, uncle, cousin, wife, ex-wife. No. You don't need to explain anything. Just share the word of God and keep it moving. Be honest with yourself. Hallelujah. Be honest. Stick to the word. It doesn't matter how difficult it gets. Stick to the word. That's all we have. The word of God. At the end of the day. That is all we have. Some people are going to cut you off. When you talk the truth. When you stick to the word. There are people that are going to cut you off. But it's okay. It's okay. It will be for a season. Don't worry about losing people when you begin to speak the truth. God will send the right people to your life. If, be, if everybody loves you, you're doing something wrong. If everybody is on your team and kiki with you, you're doing it wrong. If everybody is in agreement with what you're doing, you're doing something wrong. When you stand up for Jesus, you're taking chances of death. Because hear this, the Bible even tells you that practice evangelism, people will fight you. And this is why he said, blessed are those that are persecuted for righteousness sake. It means that you're blessed. You're taking chances. You stand up for Jesus. You stand up for the truth. God is expecting us to be clean. It doesn't matter what people say about you. People are going to talk about you regardless. If you're alive, they're going to talk about you. When you're dead and gone, they're going to talk about you. Can you change that? You cannot change the way people feel. You don't have to offend anybody for them to don't like you. You being just you, doing what God called you to do, will create enemies. So it's time for you to stop carrying these baggages and these burdens and stop worrying about who don't do this. That is not your concern. Your concern is to make time for the Lord. That's it. Go where he send you. Don't get yourself into trouble and then you scream wolf. The wise man, the prudent man, see trouble and walk away from it. The foolish man, see trouble and run into it. All you got to do is repent. 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 I know I sound like a broken record. But in the end, this is all that the Lord wants you to do. Repent, start afresh, restart. Repent, restart. Repent, restart. You don't have to change people. God will change them. God will work it out. 
That's his job. He's a promise keeper. So if he said he's going to work it out, then leave it to God. Stop trying to manipulate people by trying to fix them. You're only messing up the, the, the flow. Hallelujah. Just repent and move on. You are praying and God is not answering. Just repent. Ask God for forgiveness. Repent and restart. That's it. That's it. Repent. You're trying to fix this man. 15 years is still the same. You're trying to fix that woman. 25 years she's still the same. Repent and move on. God never tell her to try to win fight. He said win souls. Not fight. Not war. Don't argue with people. Don't do Bible politics. Don't do it. If people don't understand the scripture and you're explaining and they're not getting it, leave them. One day God will give them the revelation. Do not follow Bible politics. The word is not going to change. It's not going to change anything. Amen? Good. Well, now that I put that out there, I just want to say... Our fasting, yes, our fasting. Our fasting begins this Sunday, and it's for seven days. No fried food. So whatever fried food that you make yesterday, use it up. Because come this Sunday, we're going on fasting with no fry, nothing. And it's for seven days. Hallelujah. We are finishing the year strong. We are finishing the year healthy. In the month of January, we're going to have our fasting for 40 days. So it's going to roll over into February. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. So we will give out those dates for our next year fasting. The exact date. Hallelujah. I just want to say God has been good to us. We made it to the 11th month. And now we are about to enter into the 12th month. Hallelujah. And it's a blessing because a lot of people have died. People are still dying from COVID. So I encourage you to take precaution. People have got Take precaution. People are still dying from COVID. COVID is still lingering in the atmosphere. So please, just practice the universal, yes, precaution. Wash your hands properly. That is the universal precaution. Hand washing. Hand washing. Wash, wash, wash. Amen. Hallelujah. December 1st to December 7th, seven days of fasting. We are praying to finish the year strong. Hallelujah and healthy. It's not going to be easy that 40 days of fasting, but we can do it. We can do it. We have done it before. And we're going to do it. That was instructions from the Holy Spirit. 40 days to start the year. In faith. In faith. Meaning that a lot of people are going to. Will, will grow spiritually. Because it's for faith. You know without faith. It is impossible to please God. So expect to grow spiritually. If you are going to make that sacrifice. To join us in fasting for 40 days. Yes. At the end of the day, you will break your fast. It's not a fasting that you won't eat. You will eat when it's time to break your fast every day. Hallelujah. We are praying and we are staying in faith. Glory to God. Listen, there are some things that cannot be done unless you go on fasting. You hear me? And we are fasting for faith. Reason is because many people don't believe. Many people are still, not, many believers are still looking for people to prophesy to them. 
because their faith is weak. Many people don't even think God called them because they are still, you know, on the fence. So we will go into those prayers for faith. So I encourage you to finish up your holiday meals that you had. And this is just for the people that celebrate Thanksgiving. Your holiday meals. Finish it up so we can move into our fasting this Sunday. Listen to me. We cannot postpone God's business. No. People are still waiting for their breakthrough. People are still waiting for healing. People are still waiting for deliverance. People are still waiting on the Lord to speak to them. So we pray. You know, it is my prayer that as much as you that are here today will begin to be able to discern. The word discern meaning to see and to speak the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. So I pray that all the ministers in the ministry and those of you that desire to be used by God will be able to start to discern. So you, you're able to correct things in your household. Everything begins in your household. Hallelujah. If you cannot run your house, you cannot run church. If you cannot balance the things that God placed in front of you, which is in your home, you won't be able to do anything outside. It doesn't even matter whether it's work or friendship. Yeah, everything in life begins in your home. So if you cannot run your home, you cannot run anything, not even a business. Hallelujah. It is true. And we it's logical. So let, let us be honest in this time. There are many people that are closing down their business. There are many people that are getting ready to open up business. We have to be logical. We have to be honest. We have to be real. We got to be realistic and practical. We are looking for tangible blessings. When you have faith. You can move mountains with your faith. We shouldn't be chasing after signs and wonders. It will chase us. The Bible says signs and wonders will follow you. It means that you need to stop following prophecies from different church to church. It is witchcraft. Signs and wonders will follow you. But it will not follow you if you don't believe. And if you don't believe, it means you don't have no faith. So when you have faith, hallelujah, as small as a mustard seed, glory to God, signs and wonders will follow you. You don't have to go searching. Let me see which, you, let me tell you, it's not easy. So faith is a gift. Faith is one of the nine gifts of the spirit. And that's what we're going to fast and pray about for 40 days. People need to be filled with the gift of faith because they are being held back based on their unbelief. The man said to Jesus, forgive my unbelief. Why? Because his son needed deliverance, but he was not a believer. His faith was not where it was supposed to be. You see, by not having faith or the lack of faith can cause you to be sick. The lack of faith can cause you to die prematurely. The lack of faith can cause you to remain single. The lack of faith can cause you to be homeless. The lack of faith can block your blessings. So we have to work with faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith come by hearing. Hello. So we need to get into serious prayer and fasting for it as a believer. We need it. It's one of the gifts. Without faith, none of the gifts can work. And this is where a lot of believers fall short. Hallelujah. 
A lot of believers fall short because they have no faith. You're praying with them, you're talking to them, and they're like, oh, okay, um, maybe. I hope so. Where is your faith? Oh, ye of little faith. This is what Jesus said to his disciples. He was in the boat with them. Rain, flood, everything is coming. And they begin to wake him up. He have to rebuke. Hallelujah. And speak. So he only had two assignments. When he opened his eyes from his sleep. Rebuke. And spoke to the wind. So we pray. That peace will be still. In this season. Hallelujah. Now. My time is up. I have to go. Glory to God. We will be entering into our fasting in, on Sunday for seven days. And I pray that each and every one of you as members, are, as a matter of fact, I encourage you to share this broadcast. So the people that you love and those that didn't get to get the notification can know that we are live. Amen. Minister Pauline, I encourage you to join us on this fasting that we are about to enter in. You'll be so surprised when you begin to activate your faith. The things that you can overcome. You, you'll be so surprised when you begin to move in faith. That you don't have to go chasing anybody to speak in your life. Because immediately, signs and wonders will follow you because you believe. Glory to God. Signs and wonders follow people. But yet there are people that are looking for signs and wonders. Stop it. It's a sin. The Bible said we are not supposed to go searching for that. It will follow us. This is why you have people going all over looking for churches and ministries that miracle is taking place. You shouldn't have to do that. God will use you right there in that little church that you're a part of. God will use you right there. All you got to do is believe. Hello? That's all you have to do. Believe. Some people are, are a part of ministries all their life and they are still trying to figure out their calling. They don't know. And God is speaking every day. They don't know. They don't know. We need faith. We need to activate our faith. Hello, Tishani, how are you? Mm -hmm. We need to activate our faith. You'll be so surprised that that sickness in your body will go. Because you begin to believe, you know, that that shortness of breath will leave you. That God will heal you from it. The reason why some people are still sick because they don't think that they can be healed from it. Because doctor told them otherwise. Hallelujah. Doctor told them otherwise. Doctor gave up on some of them. And when they start to believe, that's when miracles begin to take place. The songwriter said, miracle happen when you move. But I pray that in this season, it will be well. As you move in obedience. Amen. My time is up. One more time. I got to go. It's always a pleasure. To. Welcome. It's always a pleasure to. Come out here and. Share the word of God. And encourage. Yes. God's people. 
Everything that we desire is in the hands of God. Everything, everything that we hope for is in the hands of God. Everything that we are praying for is in the hands of God. Everything that we are waiting for is in God's hands. It's in his hands. So I pray that you begin to move in faith in this season. Amen. God bless you all.